In a historic moment, the UN General Assembly adopted a resolution by consensus calling for an advisory opinion from the International Court of Justice on climate change and human rights. For the PISFCC, the Pacific Island Students Fighting Climate Change Organization, this is great news and is something they've been working towards since their inception in 2019. Uh, so back in 2019 in Vanuatu, a group of 27 law students um, started the initiative, started the organization, um, and the aim was to, uh, because they were prompted with an assignment question of how do you effectively address the climate crisis with alternative um, international um, uh, international alternatives to the UNFCCC or the Paris Agreement, I guess. And the resulting uh, assignment or the resulting answers of that prompt was to request an advisory opinion from the International Court of Justice. Now, the, an advisory opinion is basically uh, the court's very, a very extremely detailed um, legal answer to a legal question prompted by the UN General Assembly. Uh, and the legal question that we have been campaigning for is for what are... Uh, uh, what are state obligations regarding climate change? Um, and we have been campaigning for this for the last four years. Um, two principles that has always remained in the focus of the campaign is human rights and intergenerational equity. These principles were something that we valued very much only because, um, yes, it's very um, Pacific-centric, I guess, uh, especially in our consideration of not just this current generations, but, but those that would follow. Um, as well as these were just very obvious, um, very obvious concepts that we wanted to highlight uh, when addressing the climate crisis from a Pacific perspective. Um, late last year, the final text came out for uh, the legal question that would be uh, prompted at the UNGA, and we were very happy. We were very fortunate that the two concepts that we had been campaigning for, human rights and international equity, still remained at the core of the legal question. So when the final text was um, taken to vote at the UNGA earlier this year in March, it was unanimously adopted. And I do want to again mention that this is the first of its kind. It's a historic advisory proceeding. Never before has the UN General Assembly adopted, unanimously adopted a resolution until now. And what this shows uh, is that world leaders, governments all around the world are willing to compromise um, to properly or appropriately address the climate crisis. With the historic advisory proceedings, the PIS FCC is hoping to build on this momentum at COP28. For our upcoming days, I'm going to have some events coming up that we'll be hosting. Um, we have the youth reception, um, so we're trying to get youth from all over the world um, to um, participate and join us, um, and also to um, try to get states um, to participate um, in the submissions. Um, so that's probably one of the main goals here. Why is this important? Uh, this is a chance for frontline communities to bring their own voices before the court, before the International Court of Justice. That's a chance for them to be heard, and not just frontline communities, indigenous communities, youth, um, world leaders, have a chance here to, uh, I guess, bring these voices forward, bring them to the international stage and allow them to be heard. Um, so this call for states to provide state submissions is um, a main focus here at COP. Um, we want to lobby states that have yet to make it known if they're joining the state submissions. Uh, we'd like to help them if they need assistance. We're also pushing that they allow youth members to be, uh, to be part of the drafting process. We want their voices heard and reflected in the text so that it's, it's representative of the state, of those that remain in the state. Um, so, yeah, as, as Caleb mentioned, the youth reception is our attempt to reach out to youths, um, allow them to be part of the campaign, provide step-by-step -step ways that they can reach out to their own governments. We also intend to lobby states now that I mentioned that have yet to make it uh, apparent if they are participating. We want to encourage them. There is assistance. We are willing to help. We have alliance members that are willing to help. Um, and all they need to do is just, uh, I guess, give us the green light that they will be participating then we can give them the step-by-step -step of including youth, CSOs, NGOs, um, anyone, everyone, just so that the state submission is reflective of the state. The PIS FCC will be at COP28 to ensure that Pacific Island students are seen and heard. Uh, so, yeah. so our, our saying is taking the world's biggest problem to the world's highest court. For Pacifica TV in Dubai, I'm Amalia Rigsby.